Hi, and welcome to Biostock Studio. Uh, with us here today, we have Ultimovax, who's recently announced positive survival data from the phase two NIPU trial assessing uh, the universal cancer vaccine UV1 in mesothelioma. Uh, I'm joined by the company CEO, Carlos de Sosa. Welcome here today, Carlos. Thank you. Thank you, Linus, for the invitation and uh, hi, everybody. Uh, one of the key takeaways uh, from the survival, uh, survival data in malignant mesothelioma uh, patients is that in uh, UV1 combined with the current standard of care, you have seen uh, the, that you reduce the risk of death by 27%. Could you elaborate a bit about that and put that number in perspective? Uh, no, absolutely. But I think it's probably uh, also better to, to give a little bit of context about the disease itself. So malignant uh, mesothelioma is a very is a very hard cancer. Patients uh, progress and die very fast, unfortunately. Uh, these are patients that most of them were exposed during their working life to asbestos dust. And um, so they, this uh, disease de uh, normally develops uh, late in life. Uh, at the time we started the NIPU study, uh, basically the standard of care is chemotherapy. These patients were treated with chemotherapy, and if they will progress, then they were treated with a different chemotherapy, really not, uh, not good treatments alternative. Uh, so at the time, you know, the lead investigator for the study and the other investigators wanted to try uh, UV1 in combination with ipilimumab and nivolumab from Bristol Myers Squibb. That has been, you know, is currently one of the standards of carrying many other types of um, indications. But again, you know, this has been a very challenging uh, cancer to, to treat. So uh, they, uh, because the, the disease, again, there's no standard of care in first line, we moved to second line uh, patients to do the study. So the most sick patients. And in the study, the all patients are treated with ipilimumab, nivolumab, and of course, in half of the patients, we had the vaccine. Uh, so, uh, very, very difficult uh, disease to treat. Nothing is expected in reality from physicians in terms of uh, treatment effect. So, the um, getting having this reduction, the risk of death of 27 percent, it's it's very exciting, and of course particularly for patients, uh, uh, because nothing works in these patients. And I want to emphasize also this was a benefit on top of the current standard of care immunotherapy uh, that uh, had shown also benefit on top of chemotherapy. So, um, you know, very sick patients, very difficult to treat. So this, uh, these results are, are very, uh, very meaningful for, for patients. What, uh, what else stands out for the test results? or the study results? I think there were other two key findings very important for these patients. One, of course, is the safety. Uh, basically, you know, UV1, uh, the vaccine doesn't add any side effects to, the, to these patients that are already quite fr uh, fragile. Uh, and, and this is basically, uh, you know, a repetition of what we have been having in multiple other studies. So UV1 is very safe. Uh, so there was no difference in the the, the type of side effects and the percentage of side effects between the two arms. So this is a very important uh, point uh, in, in cancer patients. The other one that uh, was also quite remarkable was that, uh, you know, uh, when we measure what is called objective response rate, so how many patients have a reduction in the size of their lesions of more than 30 percent, um, twice as many patients in the UV1 arm add this reduction in the size of the lesions versus the Epinivo arm, so a 31% reduction in the UV1 arm versus 16 in the in the Epinivo arm. So also quite remarkable again in this specific set of patients. Sounds like fantastic results. Yeah, yeah. What comes next for the NIPO study? Well, you know, now for the you know NIPO study is very important. Of course, you know now, now the investigators are these are all key specialists. In mesothelioma, is a very specialized type of disease treated by uh, specialists. So they are now working on uh, uh, analyzing further the data and preparing a publication. But from our side as a company, we are now sharing this uh, data with the regulatory authorities. Uh, we already uh, shared some early data and we received orphan drug designation by the FDA for malignant meso uh, mesothelioma. 
And, and we are also talking with uh, uh, key opinion leaders, uh, uh, experts in this area, to, so together with uh, these specialists and the authorities to discuss what will be the next uh, design for a study uh, further to, to develop this indication, malignant mesothelioma. That is, you know, despite now epinevo being a standard care in first line is still uh, very well, uh, very big, undeserved as a, as a treatment option for these patients. Mm. Do you uh, think that the, the NIPO uh, results uh, will have a strong chance of being uh, replicated in the other four phase two studies that your uh, trials are evaluating you, UV1? Well, we, we hope so, but I think, I think the, the NIPO study, the, the, the first benefit is that you know, uh, this data is what we call a proof of concept, shows that the, the vaccine, despite being a very difficult cancer type, has a benefit on top of the standard of care immunotherapy currently. So this shows that, yes, UV1 has an effect. We have been having other pieces of data, you know, we, from our phase one study in, in melanoma, malignant melanoma in combination with pembrolizumab, that is now we announced also recently the four year survival uh, basically, uh, uh, patients that uh, responded and were alive continue alive, so there was no deaths reported between three and four years. So we see this extended uh, survival in, in that study uh, together with the, the, um, the data from NIPU and the fact that also the, in our lead indication, the initium study, uh, patients are taking longer to progress or die, so you start getting uh, uh, pieces of data that uh, shows us that yes, maybe maybe again it's going to be an effect that is, is going to be uh, replicated in other indications, hopefully. Hmm. You did mention the Initium study. Um, you recently announced a protocol amendment for, the, for, for that study uh, in uh, malignant melanoma. Um, could you tell us more about that? Well, uh, yes. So the, the, the Initium study is, is in our lead indication, malignant melanoma. We combine with the same uh, combination of drugs, epilimab and nivolumab, that is the standard of care in malignant melanoma. We, uh, based on historical data, uh, as we, when we designed the protocol, we were expecting that uh, uh, this is a study that has 156 uh, patients enrolled, so, you know, a decent size. And we were expecting that uh, 78 of them would have progressed a year ago. Um, and if we'll have a benefit, we were expecting that uh, uh, 70 patients is the, the end point. Will they progress or die by the first half of uh, 2023? It didn't happen, fortunately, for these patients. So we changed the guidance to the second half of 2023. And again, patients continue not to progress or die in the numbers uh, expected. So then we changed the, the guidance to the first half of 2024. But what we have been observed is that basically, you know, what uh, we are now in what we call a flat line. So when, similar to what we observed in, in, the, in the 103 study. So when patients respond, then they stay in this flat line. And, uh, you know, we made some calculations with our advisors and this could take many months, even years, until we will reach the 70 events. So of course, you know, we cannot have patients waiting for that. So we, we decided to um, uh, amend the protocol uh, we discussed uh, this with, of course, with the investigators, uh, with the authorities in the countries that were in the study, and they agreed. Mm. Uh, so now um, we will uh, start analyzing the data uh, in mid-January, uh, and we expect then to have the results uh, to be communicated in around March, April. Uh, but this is important because uh, this tells us that patients in mid-January all patients have been in the study between 18 months and 42 months, so it's quite a long time. And also the median observation time is 24 months, what is quite extended uh, when, when we know that the median progression-free survival in the historical study is about 11.6 months. So, uh, you know, um, it uh, was uh, very, you know, we are very happy that the authorities agreed to this and the KOLs understood the total rationale. So it's a, it's a very exciting period now. We know it's just around the corner. And of course, this is our major uh, main indication and everybody is waiting for these results. And we are hopefully that you know, we, will, we will see uh, the benefit of UV1. Mm. You've also um, uh, announced completing the recruitment uh, for the supplementary study in, in Isium. Uh, what's the aim of this study? 
Well, you know, the, the aim is, to, we, we, we want to understand, and this is also in, in discussion with the authorities, we want to understand, you know, what, in, in more detail the mechanism of action of UV1, you know, how the, the T cells that we uh, educate, how they react, how they uh, um, reach the tumor, how they, how they concentrate in the tumor, how they, how they act. So, for that, you need to have uh, a lot of samples taken, solid biopsy, liquid biopsy, so a lot of tests. And that cannot be done in a, in a big in a big study. So some patients from the initial study are going to be included in that calculation, but to, but most of these patients were recruited separately because we can have a lot of these uh, uh, materials that we can analyze and better understand how UV1 works. Uh, the survival data from the study in mesothelioma uh, means that UV1 uh, is the first universal cancer vaccine to show clinical uh, signs of effic uh, efficacy. Uh, are we in the midst of a cancer vaccine revolution? Well, <laughs> we, we are very proud uh, of, of these results because you are absolutely correct, you know. So, so the cancer vaccines have been for uh, many, many years have not uh, the best, the best uh, recognition. Uh, I, I think now everybody understands that uh, um, you know, you need the other side of the equation. You know, we work on the immune system that is absolutely critical to kill the cancer cells, but you needed the other side of the equation that is the checkpoint inhibitors to block the defenses. So now, I think, as I mentioned, we are very proud because uh, uh, up to now, only two companies in the whole world has shown in randomized controlled studies that cancer's vaccine work. Moderna, with their individualized uh, vaccine in the in uh, uh, less severe patients and uh, Ultimovax. Mm -hmm. And of course, you know, these uh, vaccines are totally different uh, to reach the different uh, populations. So w w we are, as you said, you know, very, very key benefits, uh, universal patients can be treated easily uh, in any, we don't need any screening, biopsies, you know, intradermal injections, so it's very easy. So we are very, very proud of that. And we hope again that now with uh, if, if we have, as we hope, the initial positive data that then really this uh, shows uh, once and for all that cancer, uh, cancer vaccines have a place in the current armamentary for treating cancer patients, so it's very important. Mm -hmm. Particularly because one of the key uh, factors of uh, cancer vaccines is the safety that um, in addition to the efficacy. So we, we, we sincerely hope that now um, um, if we want the back of positive initial data, then the, the cancer vaccine field will uh, explode more. Mm. And we were at the front end. <laughs> yeah. let's, let's hope for the benefit of all the patients and everyone out there suffering from cancer that you will succeed in, the, in this. Uh, Absolutely, thank you. That's, uh, that's, uh, that's what uh, wakes up in the morning and yeah. uh, our dedication of a team, small team, yeah. it's really to make a difference in cancer patients' lives. Mm. Thank you for coming here, Carlos. Thanks, Linus.